everyone today i'm gonna be talking about the best way to go through intermediate accounting one part one at wgu part one is broken up into three different parts you're gonna have the theoretical framework the income statement the balance sheet and the statement of cash flow. Basically, this is the foundation of the intermediate one, two, and three classes that you need to complete to get your accounting degree at WGU. This one is fairly simple. However, I do have to say, do not underestimate it. It's really good to digest all the information and really understand it because like I said earlier, this is the foundation of the degree. Starting off, you are going to learn the theoretical framework. Basically, you need to see how and what is reflected in the financial statements and how an accountant looks at that. So you're going to be trying to determine what characteristics you need while you're doing accounting and what you need to show. And on top of that, you're going to make sure that the data is comparable that it is fair, that you're using the same method from quarter to quarter, you know, the comparability is all the same. On top of that, you're going to learn about the Financial Accounting Standard Board, also known as the FASB. As a pro tip, the FAF, they are the ones that elect the members of the FASB and the SEC, they oversee all of that. Originally, it changed. It, at first, it was, I believe it was the Accounting Standard Board. However, it changed because they wanted more qualified professionals, you know, CPAs, and they wanted it to be more uh, autonomous across the board. They didn't just want it to be people from certain boards representing the Financial Accounting Standards Board, the FASB. They wanted qualified CPA professionals that are active in the profession and are able to interpret and structure the accounting standards across the board for everyone that does accounting. With that said, there's gonna be the FASB, they have certain um, codifications. There's a website you can go up and basically it tells you this accounting situation. You should look at the accounting standards as so. Just a uniform, codified accounting standards codec. Next, we get to the income statement. In the income statement section, you're gonna have the adjusting journal entries. Usually by now, you should have taken the fundamentals of accounting class at WGU. So you should have a good understanding of how this works. So, you know, you're gonna debit the expenses and credit the payable. So you're gonna debit salaries and wages expense and credit salary and wages payable. Um, one of the examples was um, you forgot to record or the company forgot to record revenue for the period. So you are going to debit accounts receivable and then you're going to credit service revenue. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Like I said, if you took the fundamentals of accounting class already, you should know how to get through this part. Next portion, you have the multi-step income statement. Don't get overwhelmed at this Excel. Just take a breath and take your time while you're working through it. So you're gonna start off with sales and then you're going to have um, sales discounts and sales returns and allowances. From there, they're gonna put the cost of goods sold calculation there, subtract the sales and then the adjusting entries for the two accounts. And then you're going to subtract cost of goods sold and get the net income. From there, you're going to move into selling activities. So this is pretty simple and it's laid out pretty plainly in the book. The selling activities are everything that involves a sale. So salaries, commissions, um, if a salesperson is traveling or gets any entertainment, um, any supplies used specifically for selling and freight out, you know, that's all sales expenses. For the administrative expenses, it's everything on a day-to-day -day basis. So, you know, things that happen within an office, you know, you pay your CEO, officer salary, um, you're going to have prepaid expense, insurance expense, um, supplies expense, if it's specified for office, remember that if only specified for office, and you're going to have basically 
any expenses that you incur on a day-to-day -day operational basis in the office, not sales. So a lot of people get caught up on the supplies. It doesn't have any designation. It doesn't sell, say if it's for sales or if it's for office. So usually I just leave that off and I think that's correct. Like there's no designation of supplies, so I wouldn't put it in either category. Next, you're gonna have the other revenues portion. So you're going to have the gains that you have um, or other revenue you have. So like rent revenue and then gain on sale of, I believe it's either building or equipment, but one of those two. Then you're gonna have other expenses and losses. And these are gonna be things that happen peripherally. So things that aren't happening in an operational sense and have bonds interest payment. That isn't a monthly expense that is either office or administrative. However, since you are paying interest on those bonds, that is still going to be an expense, just a different one. It's in the other category. And then after that, um, it's gonna calculate everything. The retains earning portion, we take the retained earnings and you subtract the amount of loss and you have to calculate it like that. A lot of people overlook it and that is an easy point to miss. So make sure you check if there's any footnotes saying that retained earning is this amount of less this year. Next, we have the classified balance sheet. This one is pretty straightforward and pretty fun. So you're gonna start with cash, don't fill it out yet because you're gonna balance it out once you put all of your other items in. You're gonna put all your assets up front, you know, things like prepaid insurance and short-term investments, and you're just gonna list it out. Make sure you are referencing the cells using the equal and then clicking on the cell, like so it'd be equal C14 or something, and don't type it in. You can lose points like that. I know it's silly, but just make sure you reference it. After that, you're gonna have a long-term investment portion and then I believe on this one, it's going to be equity investment. So make sure you reference that cell. After that, it's gonna ask for property, plant, and equipment. It's simply just equipment, and then you have accumulated depreciation under that. Intangible, this is either gonna be goodwill or trademark um, intangible, you know, something that you can't hold in your hand or you can't see, but you know it has some sort of value that is also marked on the classified balance sheet. Next is the current liability, so anything under a year. So think about accrued wages, salaries and wages payable, accounts payable, anything payable that you're gonna pay off within a year. If it's more than a year, it's long-term. This one gets a little confusing because it says like, the balance sheet is 2020, and then there's gonna be, a, I believe a note payable due 2022, you know, two years difference, but don't get fooled. Anything over a year is a long-term liability. Kind of segueing into that, we have like the notes payable 2022, and I believe the next one is bonds payable 2027. Basically any liability that you have on the balance sheet that is longer than a year. This next portion is going to be the retains earning. And basically um, you reference retained earning from the list and then you subtract the amount that's listed in the footnote. Look at the little asterisk at the bottom. It'll be like a loss of 2,500 or whatever amount um, during the year. So just subtract it. And then once you have everything filled out, you should have you know your current assets, um, long-term investments, current liabilities, long-term liabilities, and then um, owner's equity portion filled out. Take the amount in liability and owner equity subtract the amount of the assets and that difference right there is going to be the cash amount which you just put in at the top and then it should balance out if the assets do not equal liability plus owner's equity you are not doing it right that's just the fundamentals of accounting go through it again and see if you transpose any numbers or you reference the wrong cell okay statement of cash flow is next this one is pretty tough however I highly suggest you just keep going through the practice exam, the PA, until you get the mechanics of it. Starting off, you're gonna have the operating activities section. That is any change of cash flow within operating activities. So you're gonna have things like depreciation expense, and that's gonna be a positive in there. A gain on sale and investment. This is tricky, but that's gonna be a negative cash flow in there as well. And also accounts receivable, that is also negative. So for accounts receivable, you're gonna take the current year minus the pre previous year, and you're gonna equal that 
to a negative number. Even though it's accounts receivable, like on a normal income statement, it looked like a debit. On the cash flow, it's account receivable. It's a negative because it's not money you could have got in cash, but you didn't. So it's gonna be shown up as a negative because it's a liability, but yeah, you didn't get that cash yet. So you can't put it in the statement of cash flow. Next, you're gonna have investing activities. So things like purchase of land. So what is a purchase of land? You know, you use cash to buy a plot of land. You are spending $13,000 you're throwing $13,000 out of your asset column to purchase this land. That is a spending of 13,000, so negative 13. Then you're also gonna have sale of investment. That's gonna be positive. You know, you're putting plus 15,000 into investing activities. However, that gain on the sale of investment is going to be a negative impact on the cash flow. Just remember that. And then cash flow from financing. So financing, you know, anything that involves you giving someone money and receiving interest or you getting money and paying someone interest is a financing activity. We have retirement of notes payable. What's a note payable? It is something that you are paying off, but since it's a retirement, the impact on the statement of cash flow is just going to be a negative. So for that one, it's negative 1600. Issuance of common stock. What is an issuance of common stock? You are putting stocks out in the market. Investors give you money for that stock in return of you know a portion of that. So you're raising money, capital for the business. That is an increase of cash flow. And then that lastly is payment of cash dividends. Pretty straightforward. If you pay a dividend to someone, you know, you're paying a dividend to a shareholder. You know, you don't pay dividends to just whoever, but you pay it to a shareholder. That's gonna be an outflow of cash to the owner. So like, if you think about like the DC Adler, debit credit on top, assets, dividends, expenses, the dividends is also referred to as a withdrawal. So you're sending the dividends out to the shareholder. Don't overlook it because you might just get stumped and you know those five, six questions at the end of the OA could be the ones that actually save your grade and let you pass and go to the next portion of this class. So just, just don't overlook it, just get it done. And it's also pretty useful in the future. Um, you're probably gonna need to look up the FASB codifications for some point in your job. Additionally, I got this intermediate accounting book. Um, it helped out a lot. It's basically the same one that's in the course. However, for all three classes, I'm using the same book and it gives a little more detail and has practice problems in there. So I highly suggest you check it out. I got it for pretty cheap on Amazon, I believe. Find it on eBay, half price. Like, just find it somewhere and get it. It's good to have a hard copy and have a practice problem. So I don't really read this as like a book book, but I do skim through it like when I need additional help and resources to get a better understanding of the concept. If you like this type of content, make sure to check out my other videos here where I go through everything from accounting and then I have some intro to business classes and a lot of gen ed classes that everyone at WGU has to take. Additionally, if you're looking into getting into WGU, you're still kind of figured out. I also made some videos about how to enroll into WGU and also some tips for WGU students to succeed in interviews and get a job while even going to college. Anyways, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. I'll catch you in the next one.